Okay, big, big, big entrance. Okay, uh, straight into this then. Um, I'm sure that many of you would be familiar with the uh, Jerry Martin song, Ferry Across the Mersey. And as a young boy growing up in Liverpool, you brightly lay across the for me. And it was a place that promised something for everybody. And I, I'm hoping that's what I'm going to do with this talk, because Airway, we, we could talk all week about Airway. So I'm really going to talk about oxygen, because when we're talking Airway, that's really what we're thinking about. Carbon dioxide and other stuff, yeah, of course that matters too. But without oxygen, we're going to die within a few minutes. But remember that if we stop breathing, as long as oxygen flows through our airway and down into our lungs, apneic oxygenation will keep us alive for quite some time. And that's useful for us to know. Some people can even manage without an airway. This is the stick. He doesn't just drive fast cars. He's also the free diving world champion. And by remaining completely motionless and slowing down his physiology to near standstill, he optimally utilizes all the oxygen in his body. And he can hold his breath for an unbelievable 22 minutes. Wow. This is Bob. He doesn't do free diving. <laughs> he constantly works to maintain his airway, his breathing. He consumes a huge amount of oxygen just doing that. Parts of his lungs, they collapse very easily. Like many COPD patients and chest trauma patients, if you're lying down flat, he's going to go blue really quickly. He likes to be sat up. He likes to be positioned upright. You lying down, it's all going to go badly wrong. And position is crucial for this guy too. He's alive and he's conscious. He's got an open airway, but he will fight you to his last breath if you try and turn him over and lie on his back. All that blood, all his tissues, everything is going to obstruct his airway, and he's going to go blue. Delivering oxygen to this guy or even giving him an anaesthetic is going to be a real challenge, practically. We're going to have to think this through and plan ahead and decide what are we going to do as he slips into unconsciousness and all the protection he's giving himself, we suddenly lose. And while we're considering the delivery of oxygen, it's important to realise that all our toys aren't the same. non rebreather masks and back valve masks are not all the same. And many will provide as little as 40% oxygen to someone who's spontaneously breathing. Very flow rates, designs, and the valves they contain will all affect their performance considerably. And we need to be aware of that. So high flow nasal prongs, these are at 50 litres a minute, are a great way to supplement these devices that, that will then take them closer to 100% oxygen. And if you're going to do an RSI, rapid sequence induction, well then they'll, they'll assist you pre-oxygenation and speed it up. And they'll also extend what we call a safe apnea time. So if nothing else, take away from this talk, the use of these devices. Dr. Levitan's work on no DSAT, go away and read about high flow nasal prongs. Fantastic stuff. But even if you deliver 100% oxygen, if you haven't got that clear airway, well then it's never going to reach the lungs. And even simple maneuvers such as a jaw thrust or a safe chin lift can be life saving. We could supplement these with oral airways, two nasal airways, all to maintain that route for the oxygen down into your lungs and down to those alveoli. But once in the lungs, if the alveoli are collapsed, then even the oxygen won't help. The lungs collapse with the volume drops below what we call the closing volume. And it's like dropping below the surface of the water because at that point your saturations will start to fall. And reopening those alveoli is quite difficult. It's like separating sheets of wet glass, pulling them looking good, but he's poorly positioned and the potential benefits of CPAP is going to be lost. He's holding the mask so he's not keeping it sealed on and so it's not doing its job. Every time he takes it off, we lose the benefit. 
So despite having a fence post to his belly, we could improve things for this guy. Sitting him up 15 to 20 degrees on a ramp, it will reduce collapse and improve his lung function and improve his oxygenation. It also brings his ear up to the level of his sternal notch, which is the ideal position for intubation. But when we're giving all this oxygen, we're optimizing, what we're really trying to do is extend his safe apnea time, or the time to critical desaturation, which is to take it 88%, because that's when you start tipping off the desaturation roller coaster. And our ideal plan and our failed plan should all fit within this safe apnea time. When we're thinking about the drugs we're using, such as lithodium in RSI, it makes all your muscles twitch and it can increase your oxygen consumption by 10%. So by avoiding that with drugs like rocuronium, we can again minimize our oxygen demands, just like the state did when he was remaining motionless. So let's avoid sucks. But what if things go wrong? What if you fail to insulate, the saturation's falling, the clock's ticking, you quickly turn to one of these? What were they even thinking? If when your world's falling apart, you're going to work through one of these? Even this one, Rick Dutton's one, just takes too long. We need a simple plan, and, in, and NASA would say we need a bold face action, which you don't read, you just know it, and you do it. Simple cognitive tools such as the vortex, it's a simple method to show you which way we go and things are going wrong without having to think very much. Yeah, it's a great alternative. Well, this isn't. Don't go rummaging in a toy box when things start going wrong. This isn't the time. You need quick, simple actions. And that's why I like this, the Monash Surgical Airway Kit. Very simple, very clear, very cheap, and you can quickly decide where you're going with it. But I'd like to leave you with this. This is the most amazing tool of our time. The IGEL is not a definitive airway, but it can stop the clock, it can stop desaturation, and take you back to a more stable time. It's a time machine, and this is what you can use to give you the time to consider other options. Thank you.